Uh, we will be using a very small size mold. It's just three and a half inch size mold. It's alcohol ink, black. Let's resin pigments. They are in black and purplish red. And I'll be using Guzzle Meraki white paste. You can use any paste, whatever you have. And the resin is by HMS Chemicals. And this is Mod Podge. If you don't have this, you can use any glue which is in not that liquid and a steel wire which is very slim and bendable and last but not the least star of the show this is a baking paper uh, we will create an inlay with this baking paper in a while i will be showing you all the steps in just a while uh yes and there is another thing as well if you want to add some sparkle in the middle of the rose you can add anything i have used these mica flakes now i will be starting with the baking paper here i have taken my roll and i cut it like uh, some one and a half feet long a uh, thin strip of um, this baking paper and later on you will see how i am going to uh, fold it with the help of a pencil or any um, tool that you can use to um, create a fold in it like a curve in it i have uh, speeded up the process here because it's going to be boring if you are there for like if watching every second of it so i have tried to keep it as short as possible now i'm trying to add some curl in the paper just by folding it and afterwards I will be using Mod Podge to create a pipe like form now I have taken my Mod Podge you can use any anything I have tried um, you can use any uh, tacky glue not any other thing is going to work like you cannot use the squash tape you cannot use hot glue nothing really works on the baking paper so you have to work out a few glues first i tried the mod podge it finally worked so here i'm going to put it very gently on the edge of the paper I'm just rubbing it and then I folded it uh, once I got the desired shape I took this steel wire this is very important you cannot really achieve all the folds and the curves in the petal without using this wire I tried to do it without wire but unfortunately I was not able to create the flower um, I can I couldn't bend it you know when you are moving from one petal to another you will be adding some folds like you see I'm doing here I create a little bend after every little while so that it looks like a separate petal now you can see I have taken my mold it's three and a half inches wide and it's standard size mold uh, with standard depth i have taken 30 grams of resin in total um, for this um, what i don't like about this technique the only thing i don't like about this technique is it requires a lot of resin because we have to work in layers so now i have shown you the pigments again we will take our resin and i will give it a gentle stir once again and now i will start adding with the purplish red uh, you can see these are uh, these are um, pigments but they are not like they are tints they are not the paste kind of pigment so they will always be transparent no matter how much amount how much quantity you pour in it's always going to be transparent I have added the red after that I added the alcohol ink it's optional if you have ink you can use that if you have the tints you can use the transparent tints in it you can use any brand whatever you have with you 
even if you don't have a tint what you can do is you can just slightly put the paste just dot by dot and you will see that it won't turn opaque if you add a big blob then so if you add a big uh, blob then obviously you will lose the transparency of uh, it and if you add it just a little dot into the resin you can see that the resin will have a bit of color in it which is transparent so you can uh, do the experiment here what i'm doing is i'm ch testing the level by using the bubble level and now i poured my resin into the mold but i wasn't happy with the color so i poured some more black pigment in it yeah so i'm just waiting for the bubbles to go away i will leave it like that all the bubbles will come up to the surface i don't use torch i will most of the time use alcohol ink and alcohol or just the isopropyl 99% isopropyl in a um, small mist bottle and then i spray on the surface and all these bubbles just vanish like that you don't really need a uh, heat gun or any tool that has heat in it for bursting these bubbles now i just poured a little bit of uh, mica flakes here i just let the resin sit for quite a long time like for good 40 minutes and i made sure that it has thickened up and now i'm going to put the inlay that we created with the baking paper and the steel wire i'm going to put it into the mold gently uh, making sure that it is touching the base of the mold just press it gently no need to apply excessive force press on all the folds and curves and make sure that all of the rose was immersed properly now i'm taking out all these um, parts of the baking paper i have pulled out the wire already uh, this resin has been uh, cured but not fully it's still a bit malleable uh, the reason I took out before letting it fully cure is that uh, we have to cut all these parts that are raised up. You can see from the back that our rose is already forming. Now I try to cut these lumps with this cutter then I use the, um, the scissors and finally when I was feeling that all the raised parts have been removed then I took another 15 grams of resin and please don't get confused by the red container it's just all an old container that was having red dried resin inside it cured resin now i used the white paste from gazelle meraki and i have just poured a second layer on the top of the rose uh, this is going to create a beautiful contrast giving all the contours all the depths to the finished flower make sure that the white goes inside every curve and fold now here next day i'm going to show you the demolding procedure here you can already see that my experiment is quite successful now you can see this i was quite happy with it but talking about the back side since i i'm not going to sell this piece i am not doing anything on the back side but if you are, if you are doing it for the purpose of selling then obviously you have to grind the back side and then you can do a top 
top coat as well see um, the one which has three roses in it has a top coat and the other one is without the top coats give more depth clarity and these round edges which adds to the beauty okay so now let's do a quick recap of this technique uh, number one is the quantity of resin that you should be using for this technique as i said this technique requires uh, certain amount of resin uh, without which you are not really able to achieve the desired effect uh, as a rule of thumb what i do is i fill two third of the mold whatever size the mold you have make sure that you fill in the two third of that mold so that there is more depth in the final piece uh, second number is uh, the most important point one of the most important points is uh, the first layer that i poured make sure that you use tints for that layer you have to keep that layer of resin transparent and you cannot use any color for that the color should be the one that has the property of transparency in it so you can choose whatever color you like as long as it does not make the resin opaque so the first layer is transparent thirdly you have to wait for the resin to thicken up once you pour it in the mold uh, once it's in the mold i left it for like good 40 minutes so that it retains the shape number four is make sure that your rose inlay is completely immersed in the resin it should touch the bottom because after a while it will definitely float a little but since the resin is now thick so there is less room for the movement of the rose inlay now the resin once it is semi cured we will pull out all the baking paper and then we will cut all the edges the raised part and the lumps that are, have formed so we will try to cut them as much as possible to make uh, the surface more leveled so that when we put our second layer uh, which is going to be made with white paste and it has to be opaque so when we pour that second layer we should have minimum resin from the first layer protruding out of it because if there are more lumps then eventually you will have to sand your final piece from the back side and do a coat on it if you want to and last but not the least do the top coat it adds to the beauty as always gives it more depth and you can add gold on the rims of this coaster on the edges that is totally up to you your own choice hope you have liked the tutorial i hope i have been able to clearly um, uh, mention all the steps if there is anything that you need help with or if there is any confusion please feel free to comment and then i will definitely come back to you and explain the process again thank you so much for watching the video if you like it please do give us a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel